morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm here to talk about a lot of different things that are happening today. I got a new dub and stuff full of smart Alex. I got a uh, pre-critic full of a bunch of movies, romance and otherwise. Uh, I have a lot of uh, news and I got a lot of city council, but also uh, Dr. Anthony Fauci appeared in Missoula's Manfield Lecture Series via Zoom and I'll have that video during my city council report later in the show for you guys. Let's kick things off is, is that Texas is dealing with that major power outage that happened this week during their uh, winter storm uh, issues that they've been having with uh, degrees going as low as uh, 20 degrees with wind chills of negative 10 degrees. Uh, I've been kind of touching and going on a lot of this, but the major impact was the power grid uh, not being weatherized. So a lot of uh, people were, more than 3 million people were out of power. And as the days went along, they just started, they looked into more of the infrastructure of Texas's power grid, noting that uh, because of their uh, detachment from the uh, na national grid system it also impacted their uh, ability to kind of uh, rectify a lot of those issues moving forward. Uh, the kind of weather in Missoula is something that is common. So in, you know, many, uh, uh, one of the, uh, I think there was an offhand uh, uh, comment by the governor of Texas who said that is like, well, uh, uh, Nebraska can deal with it. Why can't we? Well, it's the whole idea of institutes of uh weather. It's like you, you go to a place and they have snow and they close down the schools for an inch of snow. Uh, but they, you also got to understand is like, we're so used to having snow up here. There's that, uh, impact and the, uh, to, uh, from severe to mild winters here in Missoula, while Texas usually has very mild winters year long. But good news for some of them, uh, in Texas, the weather is supposed to improve by, uh, the 50, by, uh, 50 degrees in the high in the high 50s by this weekend, and then next week it should be as uh, high as 68 degrees back into a lot of their warmer temperate temperatures, and that's in Austin, Texas. Um, in other news, uh, Trump Plaza Casino, which closed in 2014, has officially been demolished in Atlanta at Atlantic City. Uh, the casino opened in 18. Uh, I mean, 1800, no, 1984, and saw great success at the time, but things changed and nothing lasts forever. Oh, and also, uh, uh, President, former President Donald Trump was a, acquitted for a second time over the weekend. Many Republicans voted to acquit with seven members joining the Democratic side in convicting, uh, but um, impeachment conviction requires a two-thirds majority. Mitch McConnell said that he uh, was morally responsible for inciting the riot, but he voted uh, against acquittal uh, because he believed in the Constitution saying that you cannot uh, convict uh, a president who's not a president anymore. Super fun sites may not be as super fun as they sound because they basically become areas where no development can happen or take place and the former owners basically can abandon it. Smurfit Stone is one of those places here in Missoula County uh, of, uh, that has local pressures to get the EPA to clean up the site and has also had some issues on the EPA bureaucratic level. While they have set up boxes to collect samples, what they usually do is they kind of pull all the boxes together and find any kind of chemicals and stuff like that. And so far, the reports stopped as of 2017, so the last couple of years they haven't even been reporting the chemicals testing. Missoula Current also reported that speaking with folks of Missoula County Health Specialist Todd Sieb, who stated that the model of where the mill deposited the toxins and where they might migrate to was problematic to begin with that led the EPA to sample in some of the wrong places or not at all. Todd Steve also mentioned that the EPA's reasoning was that they didn't see the risk of material eroding away and washing downstream and affecting other ecological receptors or other humans. Uh, they don't do sample because they don't see it as a risk. Another issue was brought up from data from Bonner Dam's removal and the chemicals that may have already come from Bonner. Um, it's all everything goes downstream in St. Regis. They also mentioned that they have uh, they have some chemicals that even come from Missoula that they, they go all the way to St. Regis. Uh, Native American populations have also asked for an assessment and the health of their children, but EPA hasn't looked into it. Missoula County has assessed whether or not they look into a potential lawsuit for the Clean Water Act lawsuit or simply rezoning the area unless the area is cleaned up to desired levels. So right now they're looking for public comment and statements and they're gonna have them due by the end of today. So if you get this by Friday, um, February 19th, you can look into this a little bit more. I'm assuming you can go to the county's website, which is co.missoula.mt.us, not to confused with CI with the city's website. Um, 
All right, big news uh, today. Uh, the the uh, the big thing that's happening besides me cutting my nose with my razor is that <laughs> is that Reddit CEO and Robinhood app uh, of um, leaders appeared in front of Congress for the GameStop stock trading fiasco that started when hedge funds made a bet against GameStop a GameStop a GameStop that would fail. But Redditors, under one of the Reddit, Reddit community's Wall Street bets, invested in GameStop stock, raising the prices and affecting hedge funds. And uh, they retailed by going after Robinhood to cease trading among other users. So there's a lot of speculation there in terms of that. But they ceased trading um, as soon as the stocks went up and high, and it was for them to sell. But since a lot of times uh, Robinhood app was a private company, they could basically do that and it was in the terms of service. Moving on, uh, now the two sides of Congress, those who, whose wallets were in danger and those who think this was a true Dave and Goliath story will meet. Uh, Keith Gill, the Redditor who sounded out the alarm and bet more than $50,000 towards the stock and saw over $40 million in returns along with Robin Hood CEO Vlad Tenev who said in a prepared testimony that any allegations that Robin Hood acted to help hedge funds or other special interests to the detriment of our customers is absolutely false. Melvin Capital, who invested in the short, will also testify. Um, Robin Hood CEO uh, Steve Huffman uh, will testified, uh, describes the Wall Street bets community as one of the specialized in higher risk, uh, higher reward investments, but also one with significant depth where members show affection towards one another. Uh, I saw a bit of the, uh, the, the public hearing. They did it via Zoom. They got a somebody, uh, a director of financial uh, regulation studies confirmed that this diverse lower age group of people had no direct impact on the market function as a whole. She said that the FCC will look into the further illegal dealings and stated that this would, that most likely they would not find anything irregular that would have impacted the market function. This week, uh, like I said, Missoula, uh, Missoula uh, hosted Dr. Anthony Foucher via Zoom um, at the Mansfield Lecture Series to talk about the pandemic and more as America is moving forward with vaccination. And uh, just a little taste is that uh, he says that if everything goes according to plan, everyone should be vaccinated by the end of July. Uh, but right now I have a updated promo for you guys from the library with real footage from the inside the library, mostly highlighting MCAT. So take a look. MCAT is Missoula's community media resource. NCAT offers equipment like camera rentals and training like instruction and distribution help like cable TV channels, starting your own YouTube channel, a short clip for Instagram or Facebook. MCAT helps people who want to make TV shows, social media clips, and podcasts. In our new home, in the Missoula Public Library, MCAT will be offering classes in camera use, getting the best sound and lighting quality, how to use a multi-camera studio with green screen and other special effects. In addition, we will be teaching video editing on popular platforms like iMovie, Final Cut Pro, and Adobe Premiere. For kiddos, we offer animation classes, along with other multimedia activities for after school, during the weekend, and summer camps. MCAT has been serving the Missoula community for over 30 years with the material and the guidance to let your creative side blossom in audio-visual video. Be sure to visit us on the first floor of the new Missoula Public Library. Hey guys, welcome back. It's time for Pre-Critic, where I prejudge a movie based on absolutely nothing but the title and maybe a little bit of the description. This next movie is called Rock Camp, the movie. Join a group of old school rockers as they host a rock camp for a select few adult campers. In these times, there too much time of oh wait, in these times of too much time on people's hands comes yet another excuse to forget our problems and watch a documentary about adults living their childhood fantasies and meeting rock stars and going we're not worthy in Wayne World type angles that will make you think. I'm, I'm sure this is for people who are uh, 40, 50 plus. 
Uh, you'll see Segment in shorts highlighting each section of and comedy of these rock stars saying that these people aren't good enough. It's like, I think we're in over our heads. Um, and some rock star, rock obstacle courses or something, you have to climb a giant inflatable guitar or whatever. I don't know. You know how reality shows are or documentaries are in this. But you have to power slide using new wits and the world's longest slip and slide. They perform at the end and the single tear from Alice Cooper drops just before the credits roll. The end. Uh, <laughs> this next one is called Blythe Spirits. You know, this is kind of like Victorian age, uh, but also where people were really into uh, fortune tellers. So Blythe Spirit is basically a movie about an ex who comes back as a ghost and haunts uh, this guy and his uh, new girlfriend, and is and a hilarity ensues. <sighs> but uh, the whole point of this is basically it's about ancestral guilt and till death do you part, but if they come back as a ghost, then, then yeah, who knows, blah, blah, blah. This movie uh, probably has a new girlfriend reeling from the certain truth that his ex has put forward, only be taken aback by efforts by a man to who proves himself worthy to both women and gets the metaphoric fist bump from the dead and moves forward. Also, Dame Judi Dench is in this movie, and she plays the mystic who summons the ghost, so she's kind of important. I'm assuming there's going to be a part where the guy's like, oh, I need you to tell me how to get rid of her. It's like, you got to do this. But it's gonna cost you. It's like, I'll do anything. And then at the end, it's like, it's like it, the cost is too much. And he, in a way, he, uh, he's like, I'm sorry, I tried to like permanently banish you to hell or whatever. And he's like, I forgive you. And the new girlfriend's like, you were trying to do that, but you made up for it now. And then they make up, and everything's happy. And then maybe they are in a wedding ceremony, and the ghost girlfriend's like, you go, good job. <laughs> And here's another romantic movie that is uh, a part of a trilogy of... So the whole point of this movie is this girl, she writes letters. And this is called To All the Boys, um, colon, always and forever. And part of this is that Lana Condor, the actress who's been in all three movies, uh, she writes a letter to a bunch of boys that she had a thing for when she was younger, growing up, and she had some kind of connection with. Uh, summer Camp Kid, uh, Summer Romance, uh, then there's the boy next door kind of thing. And they all get the letters, but uh, the first one in the first movie was more about like, oh, blah, 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 blah. It's like, oh, weird stuff. And then it worked out. And then they made a sequel, and it's another guy who has a letter, but I'm assuming this same thing happens here, is that she goes to college, and she has to uh, determine whether or not she's going to be faithful to her very first boyfriend. So let's romanticize things and um, kind of see those things. Anyways, um, the girl, through two movies, has uh, settled into high school romance, but she's going off to a different college than her boyfriend, but maybe one of these letters w that was sent from the first movie reached the boy that she's now going to the same college with. He's a dream boat. Everything works out. But through trials and tribulation, finds true love or whatever. All right. To all the boys, colon, always and forever. Now streaming. All right. So up next, we got uh, Smart Alex uh, from the 1940s film with a bunch of young actors uh, just trying to make it big in the world. Uh, without further ado, here's this. You're right, that sweet smell is the industrial district. Yo, you're gonna like this. You're gonna love 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 this. What, what, what do you have to offer? These aren't just any trampolines. You, you can take it from me. Well, what my compatriot is telling is true. Uh, These are magic trampolines. Nah, I don't know about that, but ah, what do you have on, to man. offer? Yo, oh, what, good, are you no. taking a new take on a trampoline or whatever? Well, maybe it is just a trampoline. That's Quiet, not what knucklehead. he wants to hear. Oh, here's the thing. It's not like a regular trampoline. We put it below ground. Yeah, yeah that's right. Oh, uh, well, you're not the first ones to come up with a below-the-ground trampoline. Well, wait till you hear the kick. Well, go on, boss. Uh, what do you got there? Well, these are chemicals. Well, run off from your factories into the river. Uh, you don't, uh... I've never seen these before in my life. Thank you. Um, if you don't mind, I got more pollutant oh, to do, so understand. please take your, There's uh, chemicals uh, make the salami taste delicious. delicious. Well, thanks. Um, Why don't I tell you yeah, about eating so it's salami? Here. It's uh, delicious. Uh, what am I gonna do with all these, uh, chemicals and stuff? Hmm... Well, now hold on then, mister. The thing about those chemicals and those trampolines is it makes those trampolines indestructible. Uh, uh? And, and did you guys tell him about the indestructible part? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that capital E of uh, industry is going to be doing all sorts of stuff for us soon. Oh, man, I think I ate way too much salami. 
Have you ever felt weird? Ugh, that's enough of that. Oh, one thing's for sure is that salami's never made me feel weird at all. Uh, are we still talking about the same thing? More or less. So what did the uh, business guy, capital guy, say? Well, we really couldn't hear him over everyone talking. But yeah, we planted the seed. We're gonna get him, and then we're gonna get you out of nice here. Nice turn of phrase if I say so myself. We're this close to figuring out exactly what chemicals got on that trampoline, and then, and then, yo man, we'll be capitalism to industry ourselves. <laughs> yo, but we still gotta do something about old Chucky boy. Well, what's wrong with He's him? He's turning green. And glows in the dark. Oh, you gotta be kidding <laughs> but me. so do the trampolines. Well, that's a silver Always lining. Always look on the bright side of life, I tell you. Oh, I don't know why I turned British there for a second. What's wrong with that voice? <laughs> yeah, hey, you oh, stupid. God. All right, all right, all right, you boys. Time for him to get back into Listen, the Listen, guys, Bernie Madoff's got nothing I'll on me. I'll be out of here later. as soon as possible. Hey guys, welcome back. It's time for your city council report. This is where we talk about what's happening within the city. Um, and one of the big things that were happening in the city is that we got uh, a big time health guy, uh, Dr. Anthony Foucher, who is the lead uh, um, virologist. And uh, he's been working with seven different uh, presidents over many different years in the HIV uh, pandemic as well. Uh, so I am going to talk about Community of the Whole. Uh, and they're going to talk about rezoning, but I'm going to kick things off with Dr. Anthony Fauci and st stop making you wait any longer than you have to. And of course, throughout this meeting, many questions reflected the polarizing times we live in, and Dr. Anthony Fauci is very pleased on how effective modern science has been during this pandemic. People have often asked me, since I've been involved in so many outbreaks, uh, some of rather trivial importance, although they were interesting, and others of extraordinary impact. I mean, dating all the way back to the very early years of HIV AIDS in 1981, as you mentioned, several of them, pandemic flu, Zika, Ebola, the anthrax attacks, which we thought were bioterror as actually homegrown terror as it were. And now people have always asked me, what is your worst nightmare as an infectious disease scientist and public health official? And they've been asking me that question literally for decades. And the answer has really been quite consistent. And that is the emergence of a new pathogen, generally a virus, that's a jumping species from an animal to a human, that's respiratory born, that has two concurrent characteristics. A, it has an extraordinary capability of transmitting very efficiently from human to human. And two, it has the capability of a high degree of morbidity and mortality, either in general population or among some specific groups. In the 1980s, he worked on the HIV AIDS pandemic, Ebola plague as well. And like he said, was moving forward and working towards solutions. Uh, and like modern science has propelled the creation of a vaccine in the shortest amount of time in history of vaccines. On the 10th of January, they published in a public database the sequence of what turned out to be a novel coronavirus. Within a period of days, because of the extraordinary scientific advances in vaccine platform technology and in structure-based vaccine design, we began the development of a vaccine literally five days later. And 62 days later, we started the phase one trial. And on July 27th, we started a phase three trial. When I say we, I'm talking about the NIH together with the Moderna company, but Pfizer was doing the same thing as was other companies. Part of the speed of this turnaround for the vaccine was based in strides in modern science. D uh, Dr. Anthony Fauci talks about uh, efficacy of the vaccine. I mentioned the speed did not compromise safety. It was merely a reflection of the evolution of extraordinary science. But the question is, how do you know it's safe and effective? I mean, for the vaccine doubters, the people who have skepticism, who would say, is this the federal government maybe trying to pull something over on us? Is this the pharmaceutical company trying to make a lot of money? How do we know it's safe and effective? Well, first of all, the clinical trials that were done 
were 30,000 people in the Moderna trial and 44,000 people in the Pfizer trial. The decision of whether or not it's safe and effective was made by a completely independent body called the Data Safety Monitoring Board, which is not beholden to the federal government nor to the pharmaceutical company. But it's the final phase that everyone heard was that the FDA approval was put into motion, that which took a little over a month, and then there was certain emerging things as other wells, but not all other successes as information uh, started coming out. Um, as we are not dealing with the shortfalls from distribution of the different vaccines, some of the issues arise from as the populations in America who have a history of mistrust of the federal government and Dr. Fauci made no excuses on some of those folks who are weary of this vaccine. You have to respect the people who have that skepticism because you're absolutely correct, not only for Native Americans, um, and, uh, but also for African Americans and Hispanics. I mean, if you look at the history of the federal medical programs in the infamous Tuskegee experiments from decades and decades ago, it's a good reason why African Americans have that same skepticism. As you know, the federal government does not have exactly a good track record of how they've treated Native Americans. And so skepticism is understandable. But what has happened since those times is that ethical constraints and ethical guidelines have come into place that would make anything that even smacks of being unethical impossible to do because of institutional review boards, data and safety monitoring boards, that that never can happen. The reason why it's so important to overcome that resistance is that when you look at the disease burden that is borne by minority populations, including Native Americans, you suffer disproportionately from COVID-19. The incidence of infection is higher because you're out in the community going face to face with people who are spreading the infection. And you have underlying medical conditions called comorbidities that are prone to get you to have a more severe outcome once you get infected. For example, diabetes, hypertension, chronic lung disease, obesity, those are the things that make it more likely that you'll have a serious outcome. In my mind, as a physician and as a healthcare person, it would be doubly tragic if on the one hand, you suffer disproportionately from the outbreak, but on the other hand, you do not allow yourself the advantage of the one intervention that we know absolutely is life-saving. That would be double, doubly tragic for Native Americans. One, to have suffered in the beginning for the reasons that you mentioned, to disproportionately suffer from COVID-19 and yet to deprive yourself of a vaccine that's highly efficacious. I, I would find that very troubling. Throughout this meeting, um, Fauci uh, had various questions related to folks who were skeptical and many health providers are not forcing people to get vaccine treatments as many of them use education and recommendations that governing bodies may choose to follow. Uh, towards the end of this meeting, a young kid and his mother who are both diagnosed with COVID have been dealing with the health consequences in her son and his body has not yet recovered and suffered from various ailments as a result of COVID. So Fauci gives them the doctor difficult answer. We don't know enough about it, Hudson, for me to honestly tell you what's gonna happen over the next couple of months to a year. But what we hope that there is spontaneous recovery from this so that whatever aberrant mechanisms are going on in your body, clearly the virus triggered something in your system so even though you don't have the virus in you anymore, it triggered something that has gotten out of control. And we hope that the body's own mechanisms will recalibrate 
and over a period of time, get you back to normal. I can't promise you that, but I'm hoping that for you and for other children like you, that that's the case, that this will be an unfortunate prolongation of suffering from this syndrome, but that might ultimately correct itself. We're working very hard to figure out what this post-acute COVID syndrome is. It has a name. It's called PAX, P-A-C-S, post-acute COVID syndrome. And you're not alone, Hudson. There are many, many people who have the same thing as you do. Most of them are adults, but like you, some of them are actually children. You know, going to the doctor can be rough and for a lot of people who don't want to hear bad news. Uh, but throughout this series, Mansfield has been opening dialogues like this to help people understand not only the, the times that we live in, but the people living in it with us. This concludes the Mansfield ongoing dialogue series that, that featured Anthony Fauci. And to watch that, you can go to our channel at Channel 189. We are not published the publish, we did not publish these on our Facebook and YouTube channels per the request of Mansfield, but you can find these uh, meetings via Zoom um, on um, the Mansfield Center's uh, Facebook page as well. So just a little bit of information right there. Moving on, I have no more clips for you guys, so I'm gonna jump right in. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about some city council in terms of community whole. And this is a lot of big news in terms of affordable housing trusts set up by city council. More than 40 people have uh, uh, applied to be part of the the Affordable Housing Trust Committee, and what they're, what they're doing in this meeting is that they decided to create a subcommittee that would interview a lot of these people. And most of this is to kind of save the uh, sake for time and move forward with this. Uh, 43 people have applied. Emily Shearer, uh, who will be working for the city and this process moving forward, will be interviewing them with a couple of the city council members who stay beside. And if they were to do it during city council or committee of the whole, it would have taken probably weeks just to interview everybody because each interview, if you take it into account about 15, 20 minutes per interview, and then you add it up to watching people being interviewed on live TV. So that's why they kind of created this live committee. And last week they did a, and from last week they did nine interviews on, on live TV and it took about two and a half hours just to do. All right. So uh, that's kind of what's happening right now. They're, they're in the interview process. More than 40 people have applied and what they're specifically looking for is people from different economic backgrounds and how they can help move it forward with the uh, affordable housing trust. And affordable housing trust is not necessarily to help people um, get into housing as much as it keeps people in housing. So that's one of the biggest uh, things about this affordable housing trust is uh, people who are struggling and keeping people here because Missoula, like I've done many times before and I have mentioned, is that has a fairly high displacement rate ratio, which means the uh, cost of living uh, outweighs the cost of wages. So that's how I'm going to end it on a, <laughs> more of that sour note. But moving forward is that every 10 years, the city of Missoula looks towards ward map update. The last update had to do with rapid growth in Ward 2. And like, once again, Ward 2 is growing exponentially with the annexation of Airport Boulevard. So towards the airport in Missoula, they added some more properties. It was already part of the uh, city water and grid, and it was going to be annexed at some point. But... Last year, it got annexed just before the pandemic kind of kicked off, and right now, they're looking at the numbers, and what they've noticed is that the wards that are going to change, so mostly like nine, uh, probably about uh, five-sixths of Missoula, so wards two through six will be affected. If you live in ward one, you're safe. You won't have to deal with the rezoning and annexation, but uh, ward two and six will be affected by changing zones, which uh, recently, if you have been uh, paying attention, included Airport Volta Expressway. Missoula City Limits kind of basically ends west of Reserve Street, uh, especially on the uh, up, t not the uptown part of it, but the more of the long distance area as well. Uh, sec except for uh, Lower Miller Creek and Upper Miller Creek, which is basically kind of part of the South Hills. Um, anyways, that's that's all semantics right now. But Missoula is growing, and so far each ward needs to be between 12,671 to 13,455 residents. And as you may or, or may not already know, is that Ward 2 is the largest with 13,800 people, 
on an average 800 more than most wards in in our in our, our in the city limits. The wards are within the city limits. This isn't counting county, but the ward five, which is in second place, is far is about 400 people less than ward two. A large gap that needs to be that requires rezoning to assess that moving forward as well. Ward two is definitely one of the biggest growing areas as well, and I believe kind of it goes in a weird thing. It's like ward. Oh, actually, I have a picture. Boom! Here's the picture. And you can kind of see how it kind of rotates Ward 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 with the university kind of being the 6th area. And it's always been kind of small. I've always kind of thought that 6 would start overtaking a little bit more 5. South Hills would start shifting a little bit more towards Ward 5 and Ward 4 would be more of uptown fairgrounds area as well. Um, this again is a reflection based on construction and housing unit potential. Um, this isn't a definite thing. Uh, because they still have to assess the population based on the 2020 census. And so, whew, that's just a lot. Um, just uh, me basically talking in front of the camera, but it was nice to have that graphic up, just kind of give you a scope of what they may or might, may not do. But something has to change. There's a big gap in a lot of in a lot of these wards as well, so they're going to do that moving forward. And if you want more information, as always, you can go to ci.missoula.mt.us. And I have another video for you guys, so here it is. And when I come back, I'm going to start wrapping up my show. Isn't this what they kind of do with Rotoscope, is where they trace over uh, live actors and they kind of animate around them? Yeah, they, they animate each like frame that they're in, pretty much. Would you okay. all agree that, that The Hobbit was a little bit too long for its own good? Yeah, I think uh, so. Like, it's not yeah. a, like, it's, I think it's a fun movie, but it's not a good movie. Yeah. I fell asleep during the Hobbit movie. <laughs> At least the first one. Smaug <laughs> gets uh gets released, right? I mean, he's or I mean, like he didn't necessarily release. He just kind of left because he's just like, I'm gonna like you screwed with me. I'm gonna screw with you. Yeah, he's just like I have death. I'm gonna go kill, and then uh, he dies like the very beginning of the movie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are yeah. you drawing Eddie Murphy like a, the stand of <laughs> the <laughs> Buddy professor? Love? <laughs> Nutty Professor stand, um, Buddy Love. Yes. <laughs> I love it. That that's that's really great. Nutty Professor stand, Buddy Lover. <laughs> that's basically how the dub goes. Hey guys, welcome back. Well, that about does it for my show. I want to thank you, know, but uh, there's not much really going on uh, in terms of MCAT news. We're still kind of uh, waiting around um, to kind of see whether or not the venue is going to start opening up. The library is, uh, I actually spoke to someone in the community asking about, I was like, because they, one of their kids checked out something from the library and are, are just like, the library is closed. Can I not bring it back? Yes. The library has their curbside uh, um uh, curbside assistance right now so you can actually go up to the library and they have a, a bin on their east side where you can actually just drop off any materials books or whatever it was a cool little conveyor belt that goes up and you guys can uh, take your books back anytime that you want uh, but also you can check out uh, media and assistance and you can go to Missoula Public Library's website for more information on that uh, you can also just drive up and they have little ports where you have a number and you can be like it's, it's kind of like if you go to a gas station each zone is kind of numbered it'd be like hey I need a book for this zone I'm in zone one it's like we'll be all right out for your book and then yeah you just you get your book all right so you know just so you know I'm, and I'm assuming they're gonna uh, give a lot more um leniency for people who haven't turned in their books because everything's kind of all wonky and weird so just so you know you guys can uh, bring back and you can check out books and stuff like that but you just can't go in the building which I know it's unfortunate but just the way we are right now uh, I did mean that I, I hopefully I did mention that MCAT did cover a meeting that they took they did it with Arts Missoula Arts Missoula or the Missoula Downtown Partnership uh, talked with Anor uh, from the Missoula Public Library director, um, and she kind of gave a little uh, slideshow presentation of it, and you guys can check that out. Uh, it was, I believe it was on our Facebook page, at, uh, Missoula's Community Media Resource, and you can find out more about that, and she kind of talks about those things that are still available, what's still going on. Um, 
Okay, I don't want to speculate anymore, but it's the whole idea is like you have a center which invites a lot of people there, and it's just a two of a high risk, low reward kind of situation there. I'm not the expert, don't listen to me, uh, but you can listen to me uh, more by going on to MCAD.org. You can look at our channels. Uh, we stream our show on our website as well, so you can look at that and other meetings if you do not have a uh, charter cable. Well, Spectrum. They keep on changing the name. Whatever it is. Uh, uh, Bongo Cable Company. Uh, <laughs> but anyways, uh, like I said, MCAT.org. And for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramph. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend.